Hi, I'm Dr. Oliver Sarter, I'm Professor of Oncology at the Mayo Clinic. I'll be talking to you today about the PSMA-4 trial, which is a phase three trial. And this phase three trial is conducted in metastatic castrate resistant prostate cancer patients who are taxane naive, and they're all gonna be PSMA PET positive. And these patients are gonna be randomized between an alternative ARPI and alternatively a PSMA 617, Letitia 177, otherwise known as Plavicto. Unlike the vision trial, this was not standard of care, plus or minus the PSMA Letitia. It was an alternative ARPI compared to Letitia with a primary endpoint of RPFS and also important secondary endpoints such as OS. First of all, it's important to recognize that everyone had a prior ARPI and ADT and metastatic prostate cancer and progressive disease, and all the patients were PSMA PET positive. PSMA PET positivity was defined similarly to that which was utilized in the vision trial with an uptake in a metastatic lesion being greater than liver. And by the way, a little over 90% of the patients were PSMA PET positive. In terms of the ARPIs, the most common ARPIs that were utilized as prior treatments were abiraterone and enzalutamide, but also apalutamide and darolutamide were also allowed as pre-therapies. In the control arm, however, there was a requirement that the patient be chosen to receive at the time of randomization either enzalutamide or abiraterone depending on their prior ARPI treatment. So all the patients in the control group were pre-treated, were, excuse me, were treated with abiraterone and enzalutamide. Okay, so what do they find? The primary endpoint for RPFS was, was met uh, very clearly. Um, the hazard ratio was 0 0.49, meaning that there was a 51% reduction in the risk of radiographic uh, progression-free survival that there was 11.6 median in the PSMA lutetium arm and 5.59 months medium in the ARPI arm. There were also a variety of secondary endpoints that were positive. The PSA 50, and that's 50% decline, was 57% within the ARPI, excuse me, within the PSMA lutetium arm and that is statistically far superior to the ARPI arm. Objective response rate was about 50% in the PSMA lutetium arm. In addition, there were benefits for health-related quality of life and time to pain progression. With regard to the findings of adverse events, it was very interesting. The grade three, four adverse events were actually numerically more favorable in the PSMA lutetium arm as compared to the hormonal arm. And discontinuations were quite rare in both arms, about 5%. Dose reductions in the PSMA lutetium arm was only about 3%. And that was less common than the hormonal treatments. So overall, this phase three trial, the taxane naib showed a variety of benefits as measured by RPFS, objective response rate, health-related quality of life, adverse event profile, and the PSA declines. But overall survival was not improved. The hazard ratio was 0 0.98 at the time of publication. And why would that be? It's because crossover was allowed in the control arm for those patients who had radiographic progression-free survival endpoint being met. And the physicians and patients, if they were agreeable and central review showed progression on the radiographs, could cross over to receive the PSMA lutetium. And they did. 
about 84% of the eligible patients actually did cross over. So there is no survival benefit. I think most likely due to the high crossover rate, but of course, other factors could also be considered. So that's a brief summary of the PSMA-4 trial, which is important because the PSMA lutetium is currently only in the post-taxane, post-ARPI, metastatic CRPC space based on the vision trial. So the current label does not allow for taxane naive use of the PSMA lutetium. I think the implications will be very large if the FDA decides to approve the use of the Plavicto in the Texan native setting. Without regulatory approval, I think the impact of this trial would be relatively small. With, him, and if, with an FDA approval, I think the impact would be fairly large. So it'll be going to the FDA for consideration after additional overall survival follow-up has been obtained and filings have occurred. And I would anticipate that if the FDA approves, it will have a very large impact because many patients do not want to get chemotherapy. They don't want to get a taxane. And this trial, if FDA approved, would allow the use of the PSMA lutetium, particularly Plavicto, in that taxane naive setting. I think the responses in, in um, RPFS were pretty much as anticipated. I think that there was a surprising less toxicity in the PSMA lutetium arm as compared to the hormonal arm. I mean, the grade three, four adverse events were actually less in the lutetium arm as compared to hormones. I think that was a bit of a surprise. I think that the overall survival um, uh, uh, findings were actually anticipated because of the high rate of crossover. And we knew that there would be a high rate of crossover. So I think the most surprising thing was the low risk of adverse events, grade three, four, within the PSMA lutetium arm. You know, I, I think that the world has embraced the use of PSMA lutetium after the vision trial. And in the real world setting, we have actually published data that demonstrates that the outcomes in the real world setting are pretty similar to what we saw in the vision trial. I, I think that the lack of toxicity with this regimen overall, at least, to date, with the follow-up to date, uh, has made it a preferred regimen for many patients and clinicians. And I'll simply say that so far the adoption in the real world has been robust. Now there's been a bit of a learning curve over the use of isotopes, but I think overall that um, this type of therapy is being rapidly adopted in the real world, not just in clinical trials, not just in academic centers. I think very clearly we need to explore more in the way of combination therapy. Um, we have the NCP trial reported from Louise Emmett, published in Lancet Oncology. And I'll simply say that the NCP trial looked terrific. Also, uh, hormonal combinations probably need to be explored in the CRPC space. I think there's provocative data from Peter Mack uh, that, and others in Australia who looked at the addition of PROP inhibitors to PSMA lutetium. I think that's provocative and needs to be explored. UCSF and Peter Mack and other Australian investigators have looked at PD-1 inhibitors in combination. I think that needs to be explored. We're looking at the upfront use in the castrate-sensitive metastatic setting uh, with an ADT plus ARPI plus or minus the PSMA lutetium in the hormone-sensitive setting. That's an important trial. 
We're also looking at the use of SPRT plus or minus lutetium for those with oligometastatic recurrence. So there are lots of trials that are ongoing, uh, all of which are important. We also need to understand more about dose and schedule. Uh, we need to understand more about, uh, more broadly, the alpha particles that would be uh, those uh, alpha emitters would include lead-212, actinium-225, maybe astatine-211. There's a whole lot more we need to learn.